Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Sunshine Islands. It is the last day of spring today. I've played the whole day, and it's very late at night. I'm just about to crawl into bed, but we are going to get a cutscene when we wake up on the first day of summer. And there's also some things that I can sort of cover uh, just at the end before we hop into covering all the new content for the start of summer tomorrow. So the first thing that I forgot to mention in the previous video that I had done was that I got a sunstone off screen and it was just one of the sunstones that you get for traveling to an island. So it really wasn't anything major and I didn't feel like obviously redoing everything that I had done up to that point just so that I didn't miss out on putting that in a recording and I have done that before because it's just a completely random thing that uh, happens when you travel on Kirk's boat. I'm gonna quickly go outside now. I had to put the barn animals back indoors Yesterday I had put them outside to enjoy a little bit of sunshine and I thought, okay, the grass has just started to grow, but it's not fully mature. So maybe the animals, if I put fodder in their uh, dishes in the barn, will still feed themselves while they're outside. But this is not the case for barn animals you have to have fully mature uh, grass growing that they have access to and can eat. Otherwise, what you have to do is push the animals outside for a nice sunny day and then bring them inside later on in the day so that they don't miss out on their feeding. So every single group of animals has a different rule. Uh, so the barn animals will only eat grass if it's growing outside. The chickens, you don't have to supply them with chicken feed at all. If they are outside, this chicken feed has been sitting here uneaten since the chickens were brought back outside after my last day of rainy weather. So when the chickens are outside, they feed themselves. So you manage to save a whole ton of food that way, and you don't have to worry about them, really. And then the pets will eat food inside the stable that you put in their uh, feeding dishes, I guess. I don't really know the name for these. But if you put food out for them, even when they're outside on the field, your animals will just somehow magically eat out of their uh, feeding areas. So yeah, each animal has a different rule, uh, which is why I kind of had to experiment and play around with that a little bit, because I wasn't sure if cows were very similar to how the uh, pets operate. Going over to Mirabelle's now, she has a new breed of cow for us. So she has some Jersey cows for us to buy. Once again, when I played the milking mini game with my cow, I managed to get an S quality milk. I shipped it and because I did that, Mirabelle now has the more rare, sort of exotic uh, kind of cow. They don't give as much milk as a normal cow, but their milk is especially valuable and delicious. You should raise them at your ranch. And again, this was something I didn't even know was possible. I I covered this in another video where I got an S quality piece of wool from playing the sheep shearing mini game. Because normally what happens is you have to win the animal festival with the particular animal 
and after that point they will give you an S quality milk or egg or wool or whatever the case may be. The only thing that I can really think of is playing these mini games on an emulator and having a mouse probably makes it easier for me to be successful in playing them and maybe the success that I'm having or the speed at which I'm doing the mini games makes them have an S quality uh, product. So both times that this has happened to me, I've done it completely by accident and I didn't even know that it was possible. So you can see now in Mirabelle's shop, she has the option for a Jersey cow for a whopping $15,000. Both the rare sheep and the rare cow cost a lot of money, but their goods that you can sell are worth substantially more. So the only animal that we are actually currently missing is the rare version of the chicken and the chicken festival is coming up very soon i don't think that we're going to be able to win and get the rare chicken unfortunately and there is no mini game to be had with the chicken so i don't think i'm gonna have just dumb luck getting an s quality egg from a chicken i think i'll have to win the chicken festival but now that we have access to both uh, the rare versions of the sheep and the cow, that's a really good incentive for us to upgrade our barn because it really is a good idea to have at least one of these rare animals. In my opinion, anyways, I like to have sort of one at the very least. And that was pretty much all I missed out on slash wanted to cover before going into summer. And then I'll just take a very quick look at my current assets as well because I did very well in the springtime. I'm very pleased. You can see that I have a boatload of money. I don't think I've ever had that much money before. Uh, so we are sitting on a lot of cash that we can do a lot of things with. Part of that is going to go towards getting our seeds and everything for the summer season, of course. We are now at 258 pieces of lumber, so we are inching closer to the 300 pieces of lumber that are required for the maker shed, which is what I want to use that lumber for. And I made a lot of money. I thought that I had made a lot of money in the wintertime, but uh, I completely blew that out of the water here for our first season in year two. A lot of that was just shipping turnips, like absolute crazy. I mean, I shipped a lot of turnips. And then I had two days of mining. So on the 26th, I made $11,000, almost $12,000 alone just on mining. And on the 28th day, of spring I made almost $10,000 in mining so about t just over $20,000 worth of that was mining but the rest of that was uh, shipping things that I found on the ground uh, a lot of crops like I said and then just our regular animal products like wool milk eggs and the like so I also didn't spend a lot of money in comparison, so we're in a good place, and like I said, that's a lot of money, but it's also very easy to blow that very, very quickly, so I shouldn't get too excited. Our animals are all doing really, really well. You can see that my cow and my sheep uh, are a little bit stressed out because they didn't eat until I realized that, oh yeah, no, they don't eat when they're outside, and I had to put them uh, back in. But they're not going to get sick or anything like that, I'm not worried, and they should be better by tomorrow once everything sort of goes back to normal. 
our pig almost has three hearts. It's been a very, very slow process, but once we get three hearts with our pig, we'll be able to get that uh, sunstone from it, hopefully. Our dog has five hearts. Our horse actually has six. So hopefully our dog will be able to get a little bit uh, more affection for us by the time the dog uh, festival rolls around. And I have also been going to the Wild Animal Island and giving out some food. And we're not able to hire any of the animals yet, unfortunately, but I've just been sort of working on that slowly. It's a very, very slow process to work up to getting the animals to actually uh, do things for you. And what I've been doing is I've been giving fish to the ducks. And that's been working rather well. And by giving the uh, ducks fish, in turn, once we hire them, they will be able to go fish for us. Which I think is a pretty good trade-off. All right. Before we lose too much time, let's go to sleep, because we still have some other content to cover here. Good morning, do you have a minute? I'm Dr. Trent. I'm vacationing on this island. I'll be staying a while, so I thought I'd come say hi. Everyone here is so kind, and it really seems quite nice. I'll see you later. Yes. A familiar old face. Once you unlock all of the islands, and you unlock Chelsea slash Mark, you will get uh, visiting villagers that will come for a season from Mineral Town. So, Doctor will visit for the duration of summer. Uh, he will stay at the inn, and we can befriend him like any other villager if we so choose. We can talk to him, we can give him gifts, there's a few events with him as well. But don't feel pressured to give him a lot of gifts or spend a lot of time on his friendship because the visiting uh, people do not have sunstones, thankfully, because I think it would take a very long time to get to that point of being able to get sunstones from them just because they are here for such a limited period of time. And you also have to remember that you have to talk to them for four or five days before they will actually accept gifts from you. So we missed out on our spring visitor. Uh, doctor will be here for all of summer. And then we have two villagers that will come in fall. And they're sort of unique because they will actually stick around for two months. They will stay for all of fall and all of winter. So that's just another sort of neat feature that's been put into here. It's just sort of neat to think that people actually come here for vacation because that seems really likely, right? People go into a nice island for a nice vacation. And it's also really nice to see some of the characters from uh, some of the older Harvest Moon games as well. I really like that. So at this point, I've flapped my gums for a super long time and uh, I don't have a ton of video time left. So let's check at what Chen has in his shop. It's probably a good place to start so we can look at what we can plant this month. So I think last year, if I'm not mistaken, we had tomatoes, we had corn, and we had onions. And I think it's just the pumpkins that are new. And aside from that, there's really nothing new in his uh, store for us. And we also missed out on the shipping 100 crops in summer sunstone last year. So we do have to make an effort to ship more. I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, I think tomatoes are the crop that we need to grow for the crop festival as well. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy a bag of each for now. Pumpkins are a royal pain to grow. They are very, very slow. But I think because I'm actually keeping track of my water and my sunshine on uh, paper, and I'm keeping track of the points that they need instead of just doing it willy-nilly, I think it'll probably be a little easier for me to grow, or so I hope. I have one more spot for a tree, and I will probably end up putting a grape seed in, just because I only currently have one grape tree. It's just that grape trees are so, so, so slow to grow. They need so much water <laughs> in comparison to the other trees. So. I guess I can buy the seed. Huh, I've got lots of money. And we'll store it in our toolbox for now. And I went through and I looked at the weather for the next week and uh, there is absolutely no point <laughs> that we have to watch out for rain. It's gonna be nice and sunny, and I think I actually have four or five days in a row of beautiful, bright, sunny days with three points of sunshine like I'm having today. So hopefully that'll be a really good start to growing our crops that need a lot more uh, sunshine in the summertime. And I have to fix up my field a little bit and figure out what I'm going to grow where. And just to give ourselves a refresher, if we look at our calendar, the first thing uh, happening in the summer is our chicken festival. Like I said, I don't have confidence that we can win because it's unlikely that I'm gonna miraculously increase my chicken's heart level by like four in a week. But again, we will enter anyways. We have the cooking festival on the 13th. We have the cat festival for our non-existent cat on the 18th day of summer. We have our dreaded fishing contest, which again, I just know I'm not going to win, but again, we'll probably enter anyways. We have our fireworks festival, which at this point, luckily this time around, we will have plenty of choice on uh, potential dates that we can take, which is going to be really nice. Last year we didn't ha have an opportunity to take anybody at all. And then finally, we end up with our summer crop festival. And I'm actually glad that I checked the calendar because I thought it was tomatoes. Uh, but I was wrong. We need to grow some corn for Felicia. So. Summer's a pretty jam-packed month. We've also got quite a few birthdays in here to keep in mind. So I'm pretty excited to get things started and to see where summer takes us. So I'm just going to uh, play my day. I'm just going to plant all of my stuff and get all of that boring farm stuff out of the way. And then if anything interesting comes up or I have something to share with you guys, I will of course be back for another video. Thank you all so very much for watching and I hope that I will see you next time.